no further questions. Thank you. Uh, Mark Reaganweather would call himself. Mark, you sound like you to tell the truth. You're Mark Reaganweather? That's correct. And uh, you're presently unemployed? That's correct. How long uh, have uh, had you been a Flint firefighter? I uh, celebrated 32 years uh, August 16th. And uh, how long is it before you reach your full retirement age? Um, about 15 months right now. And your last position with the Clinton Fire Department was chief. That's correct. Mark, I want to uh, just review with you the exhibit book that's in your lap so that um, the commissioners will have an understanding of, of what those exhibits are and, and why they're there. Uh, exhibit one is an organizational chart for the city of Clinton. You see that? Yes, sir. And uh, the, fire de the fire department is one of a number of departments that report to the city administrator. That, that's correct. That's correct. And Exhibit 2 is the uh, organizational chart for the Clinton Fire Department. Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, and you're at the top of that chart, or were, as fire chief. Yes, sir. Uh, you tell just tell the commission a little bit about the responsibilities that you had as fire chief uh, dealing with these various departments. Well, we have three totally separate functions. Uh, first function is fire prevention, education, uh, code enforcement, and arson investigation. And that uh, responsibility is under the command of Michael Brown, who at the time was our, our fire marshal. Uh, we have another division, which is our EMS training division. And that was under Division Chief McGovern, and his responsibilities were training the department, uh, whether it was rescue, EMS, or fire, was overseeing our EMS department, uh, responding as our safety officer. Uh, there's many, many more. Uh, we're a small department, so we're required to uh, wear a lot of hats in order to be able to function uh, within the budget that we've got. Uh, then it goes down to our three battalion chiefs. And each battalion chief oversees 14 firefighters. And uh, in addition to operations, responding to fire calls, EMS calls, rescue calls, uh, each one also has additional responsibilities. Joel Atkinson is uh, the Sea Ship Commander, and he's also responsible for buildings and grounds. He develops the budget. He sets up the uh, work details and uh, uh, working with me on the station renovations that we've been proposing. B ship battalion chief is Kenneth Schumacher, and in addition to his command responsibilities, he's responsible for personnel, and that's the scheduling of all the people uh, and those types of functions. And then the A ship commander is Creighton Regenweather, and in addition to his command uh, responsibilities, he has responsibility for all of our vehicles and uh, maintenance and equipment and so on. Each of these divisions, uh, with that, they have responsibility for budgeting for their respective functions. So, uh, Batang Chief Regmother, for example, has got a 20-year plan in place for replacing our vehicles and our equipment as they age, and he's got estimates of what those costs are going to be. Uh, Batang Chief Atkinson, the same way with our buildings, he has a, assesses our three buildings, our grounds, and makes recommendations as to what needs to be done in what year in order to maintain our structures and so on. And our whole goal with this is, is each of us has a limited span of control, each of us has a limited amount of, of knowledge or you know, ways that we can uh, spread ourselves. And uh, this is the way for me to oversee all five divisions. And each of those divisions has responsibilities. And we set goals. And uh, 
I kind of take a step back and let them do their jobs. I, I don't blame in micromanaging. If they have a problem, they know, they come to me. Uh, a good example is Tim Schulteis' uh, complaint. Uh, Andrew McGovern brought that to me. He said, hey, just need to make you aware of this. I got a complaint. Uh, the same is the same with all the botanic chiefs, same with Michael Brown. If he uh, is involved in code enforcement, and uh, let's just say he has to write a ticket to an influential person in our community, he may come and give me a heads up so that if my boss calls saying that he had somebody call him, I'm aware of the situation. Mark, um, what's your management philosophy with regard to those people that you have given positions of responsibility to? Well, each of those individuals are a, a command player, a command, I'm part of my command staff, and uh, I have nothing but the utmost respect for all five of them. So I bounce uh, ideas off of all of them before making decisions. I trust in all five of them so much that uh, in the hiring process, once the Civil Service Commission establishes a list, those five individuals actually do the interviews and they give me the recommendation and or their recommendation for who to hire. Uh, the same way when we do promotionals, which is uh, a, a really big thing in our department because promotions don't come around that often. So they're very important to the individuals that are, are testing for those. And instead of, like the state law allows, uh, me being able to just pick whoever I think should be in that position, I trust these individuals and uh, I've uh, delegated them the responsibility to interview each of the candidates, establish a list, and then I promote on their, based on their recommendations. So you try to drive decision making down to the lowest responsible position that can make the decisions? That's correct. In fact, there's three lieutenants that are uh, uh, assigned to each battalion chief, and our goal is to get it down to where they're making the decisions. If there's a problem on their ship, like I say, if you'll excuse my language, when they do good, pat them on the butt, and when they do bad, chew their butt. But it's their responsibility, and that's stuff that should be done at the lowest level, not like it was done years and years ago where everything ended up on the chief's desk. And I'm not the direct supervisor of these individuals, and it needs to come from their supervisors. Uh, exhibit three is this packet of materials that's sitting here next to me. I'm not going to go through that, for which I'm sure everyone will be grateful. Uh, but uh, essentially, uh, that's some documents from your personnel file that talk about the various training schools and, and qualifications that you've had over the years. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, I think there might even be a letter or two in there of commendation. Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, didn't you receive a commendation for saving a life uh, at one point, at least one point in time? I was uh, lucky enough to be on the crew that uh, did the first uh, save using the defibrillator uh, in a fire base system. Mm -hmm. And you got a letter of commendation for that from, or a 